Hi, welcome to Equitation with Erin. This is the first instructional video that we'll do. Second video altogether, first video was just an intro. What I wanna start out with is the idea of riding. When we begin to learn to ride, some of us are under the impression that you're gonna sit in the saddle. I mean, you kind of are gonna sit in the saddle in that your butt is going to be making contact with the saddle. That is the end of the sitting. That is, it is no, after that, it has nothing else in common with sitting. You sit in a chair, you're sedentary. Nothing is doing anything. You're just completely passive. When you sit in the saddle, even if the horse isn't moving yet, they could. Something might be scary over there, or, you know, they might think, oh, it's time to go forward, or, you know, I'm gonna shift my weight, or I'm gonna shake. <laughs> Had that one too, some are good shakers. So the moment your hiney touches the saddle and you make contact, the idea of sitting is no longer, there needs to be a different verb. Oh, there is, it's called riding. Riding is not sitting, okay? Riding is active, sitting is passive. What do I mean by that? It means when you are on board your horse, you are in a state of readiness. Your body must be in a state of readiness for what is to come. Ah, notice I didn't say a state of you know, being for whatever's happening. Yeah, but it also must be in a state of readiness for things to come. What might come? Well, you might be walking on your horse, right? This is my impersonation of walking. No, my shoulders don't move like this. This is what my hips would be doing along with the horse, right? So, I mean, I'm trying not to get up and show you my hips moving, at least in the first video, but we all know it's going to happen. So, because sometimes you just need a demonstration. So anyway, so you're walking, right? Okay, so you're, okay, it's fine. And the beginner rider thinks, well, this is what's happening. This is what's always going to happen until I tell the horse to do something different. It's not a bicycle. It's not a motorcycle. It's not a car. It has a mind. The horse has a mind. He can decide to go, whoop, stop. He can decide to go, woo, forward, <laughs> right? Are you ready? Or are your, is your body just doing the bare minimum for where you are right now in the walk? And as a beginner, yeah, you are just there. And that's okay. That's probably why you're being led around or you're on old trusty who's like, yeah, this is all we're gonna do. I'm not gonna suddenly stop. I'm not gonna suddenly shoot forward. I'm probably not gonna trip, you know? And I'm probably not the horse that shakes. That's why your instructor puts you on that horse in the beginning, right? Because they know you are not in a state of readiness. You're barely learning what's going on underneath you. But as you do become a rider, you need to understand that whatever you're doing has to also include that state of readiness. So what do I mean by that? How do you, how are you in a, I need to stop walking. <laughs> how are you going to be in a state of readiness? Well, you need some muscles to be engaged. And this is true for all disciplines of riding from dressage, to reining, to ranch riding, to trail riding, to hunter, jumper, all of it, okay? It's, it's the same. And every concept that I tell you is the same across all disciplines unless I specify otherwise. Now, what needs to be engaged? Your back needs to be engaged. Well, what do I mean by your back? I mean, imagine your spine, right? Think about your spine. We all know we have a backbone. And think about the muscles that run along the side of your spine, okay? Think about those muscles. We're not trying to have an anatomy lesson. It's not, I'm not trying to give you more information than you need. So, you know, those erector spinae muscles, they need to be engaged. It means they're not just bleh. They don't need to be totally relaxed. They also don't need to be <laughs> totally frigid, right? 
So when you are riding, you have muscles that are engaged, which means, hello, they're there. They're doing something. They're not just passive, but they're not, oh, either, because that's not going to serve you well. Because when you're, you're preparing for one thing, you don't know. But when you're in between the, and the, then you're flexible. You're ready. You're, it's like bobbing and weaving. You know, your horse starts that way, you're, you go with them. You know, if you're like this, you're not going with them, right? <laughs> now, your seat. We'll talk about what is your seat. Not right now, but just think about your hiney, your, your cheekage. Let's think about your cheekage. Let's think about your thighs. Let's think about your inner thighs, okay? Those muscles need to be between bleh and hee, okay? Just put them somewhere between somewhere in the active realm, right? But make sure everything's still bendy. If stuff still, if you're not elastic, then you're in this state, right? Which is why Sally Swift's book, Centered Riding, she focuses so much on supple, 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 supple. Because if you're rigid, you're not gonna move with your horse. It's super important. But Actually, over the years, I've seen so many, especially beginner riders, be way too loose and not engaged at all. Just in a sedentary, I'm going to sit here, because they ha they're under the impression the horse does all the work. And they watch a beautiful rider and they don't see the rider doing anything. Well, if you watch a rider and you say, she's just sitting there then she's doing her job because it's supposed to look like that. It's, it's not true. She's working her ass off, literally, but it's invisible because it's just right. It's just right there in the middle. You're not going to see her be super stiff. You're not going to see her flopping all around, right? It's right there in the middle. And depending on what you're doing, you know, certain muscles will get a little more engaged and a little more supple but that's the realm in which you work with your muscles it is not a sedentary activity even on the trail you know your horse can trip they can spook oh my horse never spooks baloney they all do and believe me they all trip so you know what second of all if you're like this you're making your horse's job harder, so knock it off. If you're like this on the trail, you know, you're stiff and it's uncomfortable for the horse. So you still have to listen if you care about your horse's experience, which I think most of you do. So riding is active. Riding is not passive. Riding is a verb. I understand sitting is also a verb. Dogs, sorry. We're all horse people. We get it. Sitting is also technically a verb, but it's passive. You sit, you're not doing anything. You ride, you're doing a lot. Now, don't get overwhelmed if you're a beginner because you don't know yet what it is you're supposed to be doing. But if you're a beginner, you're just starting out, all you need to know is, well, you're going to be doing something all the time with everything. I used to tell all my riders, even your pinky finger has a job. It's true. So it can be overwhelming, but you have the right instructor. You go step by step and it builds. Just like when you were learning to drive and at the beginning, especially with stick shift, you thought, how am I ever going to remember all of this? There's no way I can do all of this and remember the traffic rules and, you know, not, you know, wear out the clutch and, and it, what have you. How am I going to do all that? I can't imagine. And then next thing you know, you're driving from A to B and you can't even remember how you got there. Riding will be like that too. So. Don't let that get you overwhelmed. Just know that riding is active, not passive. Thanks, hit like and subscribe.